So good day. In my talk today, I would like to present our work on prediction of MSC gene presentation and how we can apply those developed models to assess in silico the immunicity of uh, biologics. Historically, MSC class two uh, binding prediction algorithms have had a poor reputation of being over predictive, achieving many false positive predictions. This is illustrated here in this benchmark figure from a few years back, where a serial series of the publicly available methods were benchmarked uh, against some independent benchmark data. And show here that even the best methods, the one shown here to the left, uh, have a performance in this benchmark of an AOC around 0 0.8, which is lower, uh, much lower than what we observe generally for MSC class one. Uh, binding uh, prediction algorithms where the performance values are in the range 0 0.9, 0 0.95. But this has changed, in my view, over the last uh, couple of years by introducing novel prediction training methods and, and, and novel uh, data to train the methods on. Uh, if you look into the, to the public domain, for instance, the IDB database, you see a huge amount of uh, MAC ligand data being made available. Uh, and this number has increased dramatically over the last year by the inclusion of uh, peptides obtained from mass spec MAC elution studies, where you elude off peptides from the cell surface uh, in complex with MHC. And those peptides have a really high information content because they are in containing information not only about the MHC binding, but also all the uh, steps leading up to MHC presentation including processing and all the interactions with the uh, chaperones uh, interacting with the MAC in the binding event. So, so by training on, on, on mixed data types, we were able to, to move forward. Uh, so historically, we were training on these in vitro MAC binding uh, data uh, where we have uh, peptides uh, with here yeah, shown in the MAC class one context with a binding affinity associated to individual MAC molecules. And from these, uh, we could train uh, conventional uh, algorithms uh, a bit challenged by the fact that the MHC molecule has an open uh, end in the binding clip, allowing peptides of highly variable length to bind to the molecule. But since the binding uh, core, a binding motive also for MHC class two is in most cases a nightmare, we could design an algorithm that scan through all these peptides identified during the training algorithm, a likely binding core, and then from that training the method, arriving at a tool that can both predict the binding core and the interaction strings between the peptide and the MHC. And this model is kind of old now, but it was developed uh, to solve this problem and it's called NNLI. And it proved to be very effective uh, training on binding affinity data. We could characterize the binding motive for all of these is the R beta one molecule uh, and show that they were very different, again, leading to this high diversity of the uh, MAC peptide uh, space presented on each uh, cell line. It, the challenge of developing prediction algorithms for MAC is, as you know, the high polymorphism of the MAC space with the, uh, now it's a bit outdated slide, but close to 25,000 different alleles being characterized in the uh, MITT the database. So to characterize each of them is an impossible undertaking. And we have designed this uh, pan-specific approach where we train not only on the peptide sequence, but also on the MHC binding environment shown here in blue below, where we can kind of learn this interrelationship between peptide and MHC molecule that results in a given binding affinity. So again, here showing these five peptides, uh, all the same peptides measured to different MHC class one molecules in this case, and the binding affinity value shown here to the, light, to the right. These variations are dictated by variations in the binding environment of the MHC molecule. So by training this combined, we can make a pan-specific method that can now make predictions and extrapolate from the alleles where we have data to the complete the MHC binding space. Uh, and now back to the data I mentioned before, these uh, novel eluded lichen data sets uh, that we get from mass spec uh, elution studies. And here, these data are of a different nature compared to what we had originally, the MHC binding data, in that they are binary, they are binders, and then we can make artificial 
non-binding peptides by assuming that random peptides do not bind to the HLAs. And then we have this uh, quantitative yes, no data to train on. Uh, and since we now have a mixture of data, uh, both uh, of these binding affinity with build value, uh, continuous target values and these binary, how do we mix them so we can benefit from both data types when we train our model? Our model. We design this kind of pipeline here where we train on, on a, a normal uh, machine learning framework, but now have two prediction values for each peptide. One is the binding affinity and one is the duty like and likelihood score. Then during training, depending on the color of the peptide, we train the corresponding weights in the network. And that allows us to mix these two layers together and get the synergy of a boosting performance beyond what each of the two data types contain by themselves. We can then from these uh, models predict binding preferences and, and run predictions and predict high binding peptides in the given protein context. And that leads us into the next challenge of dealing with these mass spec uh, eluded ligand data. In this case here, we had the data assigned to, to binary one and zero with a single allele associated with each peptide. In most cases, these mass spec data have a different nature. They are multi-allele in the sense that each of the peptides we observe seen here on, on, the, on the right in this picture uh, can originate from multiple uh, MHC molecules, all the MHC molecules expressed on the surface of the given cell under investigation. And that makes it challenging to, to learn the binding rules and the processing uh, that leads to a presentation, we need to deconvolute those peptides and map them back to single specificities in order to characterize what each MHC molecule, uh, what type of peptide space it can present. So, so we have to kind of find a way to, to, to deconvolute and cluster these peptides into submotives where each submotive will then correspond to one MHC specificity. This is a far from trivial task. Uh, we designed an algorithm a few years ago called in a line MA, MA for multi allele. And it's very simple in, in, in con concept, but really powerful. So it builds on the idea that you can train an a pan specific method on single allele data, meaning data either binding affinity or mass spec the ligand data from cell lines expressing only one single MAC molecule. We can train that model uh, for, for some time to get some pan-specific predictive power. Uh, and then we can use that model subsequently to annotate these data, MA data, uh, so that we get each peptide in these MA data assigned to one single allele. And now when they are single allele by annotation, we can feed them in to the training data here and merge them and then train again. Then we can do that over and go over again. We can re-annotate these MA data during the simulation. To show you how this has worked after this pre-training, some alleles are already highly and accurately characterized because there are a lot of binding affinity and a lot of single allele data available for those. So after just this short uh, pre-training, we have already captured the motive accurately. For other alleles that are not part of this SA data set, we get a motive out, but then as we continue our training as shown here below, this motive is changed dramatically. And we end up having a motive that only to a very light degree resembles what was captured in the ESA data. This is kind of the power of this MA method that you extrapolate and get, uh, you extend the data set beyond what is characterized by the ESA data and are now able to make and integrate uh, data from these MA data sets with a much broader allelic coverage. Uh, and, and this can also be, be, be applied to, to MAC class, uh, class two, where we again can, can apply the method and deconvolute finding motives in different cell line data sets. We can add in context, which are these amino acids flanking the peptide the ligand sequence and show that that uh, actually leads to a boosted performance seen here to the, to the upper uh, left, sorry, upper right, where we have the, the, the old models uh, before adding in these mass spec data with the performance of 0 0.8 I mentioned before. And now by adding in these uh, multi-allele data and these context information, uh, we get a boosted performance. And that's this performance gain also holds for, for independent epitope data sets. This is a, the tool we even have available in the LMC Pan 4.0. Uh, so, so to conclude this first part, we have boosted performance dramatically for MSC class, class two. And if you add in signal of processing from the context, you get an even further increase in predictive power. So now how can we apply these tools to assess uh, the 
immunicity of a, of a protein drug. Uh, protein drug can often induce the adder response, as we all know, and the adder response is correlated to the ability to induce a CD, CD4 helper response to, to a peptide in the protein drug. So most people would like to assess MHC class two binding potential as a mimicry to assess if the protein can induce an adder response. And, and most uh, companies and, and people doing this would do this by running these MASP assay, the MHC eluded uh, ligand assays where you feed these proteins to, uh, to antigen presenting cells and then you elude off peptides from these uh, protein cell surfaces. Uh, and that could be a mimicry or an idea of, of what is available for, to, to stimulate a T cell response. And doing this, you get these profiles back uh, as shown here, a mass profile for a given protein drug. You have regions here with a high chance of, of inducing a T cell response and other regions where there's hardly any uh, potential to, to bind to the HLAs of the given population tested. Then uh, we would like to say, can we uh, do use our prediction algorithms as a complement to these highly expensive and, and complex MASP assays? So, so we uh, tested this approach using the NLINMA NetMEC 2 PAN 4.0 model compared to the earlier NetMEC PAN model, the trained on binding affinity data only, and then an other method, NetMEC 2 PRED. A model also trained on, on these mass spec ligand data. And what we observe in general across many, many proteins is that we get a higher correspondence between the mass data shown here in gray and the predicted uh, profiles when we use, uh, sorry, when we use these uh, new methods trained on mass data. And we remove many of these false positive predicted peaks that we saw for the earlier uh, methods like NetMEC 2 PAN. We can now go further and, and investigate. We see often certain peaks remain in these uh, predicted uh, mask profiles as shown here in peak two and in peak four in this example. Then we can make take peptides from those regions and test them for T cell responses uh, in, an, in a simulation assay. And doing this, we find that actually the, the, the peak two and peak four, both of them, have responses. It's a very, very small study. Only six uh, donors were tested, but in half of the donors, there was response against peptide two. And in one out of six donors, there were responses against the peptides around peak, peak four. And we see no responses against peptides from regions with no uh, predicted uh, presentation. Uh, and, and we see responses for regions where both the predictions and the MASP assays do agree. Let's suggest to us that you can complement the MASP assays by these in situ models to get a more comprehensive picture of where you have regions of potential uh, T cell uh, hotspot uh, regions. So, so, so the last thing I would like to mention on this is that we have now only dealt with the MHC binding potential, but we all know that uh, self-similarity like peptides from this host, the patient's own genome that uh, have been shown to T cells during thymine education would have a low chance of being monogenic. So could we somehow make a simple model to take into account the self-similarity of the peptides to the self-proteome uh, and thereby downweight the predicted uh, potential for generating an immune response to those regions? And we are working on this uh, for some time now, trying to get our hand on this. It's a very complex problem because what defines self-similarity is highly non-trivial, but we can make a simple uh, model by just saying, if a given peptide in your protein drug sequence is found with an identical match in uh, the uh, reference of the human proteome or a database of, 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 uh, of known uh, B and T cell receptor sequences, then we can make a, a, a profile showing the, the totalization likelihood in that region. And this is what is shown here in this plot with the, with the green bars. And we see here that the region two that was immunogenic and predicted to be MAC binding uh, has no tolerization. So this is really a foreign region in this protein. And also we found a response here. In contrast, the, the region five here, right? Where there is some kind of peak, but we didn't see a response. If you go back here to this region position five here, there was no response at all against that peak. And that can be explained maybe by this, uh, that this region here is highly similar to self. 
And if you go, then go back and test this idea on a bigger set of protein drug sequences where we have the, the, from a publications, the clinical uh, immunity, uh, the proportion of donors which, uh, inducing an adder response to the proteins, then we see if you just take the, the area under this curve, the, the red curve, uh, without taking into account polarization, you see a very poor correlation between what you see in the clinic on the, on the y-axis and the predicted immunity on the x-axis. But if you take into account this polarization and downweight the importance of peptides that are found with identical matches to the human proteome, then we see a positive correlation, not perfect, but still positive. And this is kind of the way forward, finding a way to take into account self-similarity and polarization into the models to really be able to predict the, the response, the clinical response against protein drugs. And once we have that in place, we can now start to play around and, and, and make assessments on ranking proteins based on this predicted uh, area under these curves here. And, and then we can, we can kind of rank proteins based on this area. We can visualize where in the protein do we see the hotspots and which alleles are, are involved in those uh, hotspots. And we can start to demunize by potentially mutating positions in the protein in those regions and thereby hopefully be able to demunize and lower the area under this curve uh, and, and making the protein shock less immunogenic. So in summary, I think we have shown that MSC class two uh, presentation tools have been improved dramatically over the last years. We can start to use those uh, prediction algorithms to guide the assessments of protein immunity and perform the immunization to lower that Im uh, immunity. So with this, I would like to thank you uh, and take questions later.